Hi everyone and welcome back to my 2022 training log. Really pleased with how this week turned out. Uh, I was able to overcome a little hiccup on my long run and completed the rest of my workouts um, really well. So very happy with how things are going. Let's jump right into Monday's workout. So my training schedule called for a Mona Fartlek, which is named after the famous Australian runner, Steve Monaghetti. I won't get into the exact details of uh, what the workout consisted of. You could Google a Mona Fartlek and it will, it will outline exactly uh, what's involved there, but it's basically a progression of uh, repetitions from 90 seconds all the way down to ending up at 15 second reps and you slowly increase the speed throughout those reps. So by the end you're doing 15 seconds, uh, 15 second repetitions at quite a high pace. I was really happy with this workout. I had a great sleep on Sunday night and felt energetic throughout the run and was able to pick up the speed pretty easily when I needed to. I incorporated a couple of hills as I'm trying to reach an elevation target each week as well for some of my 2023 goals. The numbers for the run were 6.37 kilometers, 43 minutes total with 76 meters of elevation. And that included around a 15 minute warm up and a 10 minute cool down. The average pace for the run was around 6 minutes 39 per kilometer with some reps going as low as four minutes 20 per kilometer. I'm generally a little bit hesitant to increase the intensity in runs as this generally results in some foot pain and discomfort in the following days. I also had a very tight lower calf, which is likely a major contributor to my plantar fascia issues. So despite that, I really had a great workout and uh, didn't feel any real pain or discomfort in the following days. So I think that's really good signs that the plantar fascia issue is definitely improving. Tuesday was a strength workout followed by a bike as usual. The strength workout consisted of some stability exercises, some core uh, workout, and also some kind of weighted exercises like squats. The bike uh, was just 60 minutes at low intensity. Wednesday, we had the morning group run and this Wednesday was uh, really quite cold. The temperatures dropped um, yeah, pretty aggressively. So a lot of people turned up with their jackets on and, and warmer, uh, warmer gear. Um, but you know, as we got moving and uh, we hit some of the hills, everyone warms up and, and it actually turned out to be quite a pleasant morning. I felt really good during this run. The hiking parts felt light and easy and it was running pretty quick on the downhills without much effort. It's, uh, I think, really good signs that the training is paying off. The totals were 4.83 kilometers, 45 minutes total with 149 meters of elevation. The average moving pace was seven minutes and six seconds per kilometer, but we do stop a lot and take photos and kind of enjoy the scenery. So I'm sure the average overall pace was likely a lot slower than that. Thursday was a hike or a bit of an elevation day and I usually head out to Harafu to climb the ski hill. It started again pretty cold this morning but it ended up being quite spectacular as you know the sun was rising as we set off and once you start warming up because you're going uphill straight away you can kind of shed a bit of the layers and uh, yeah it was really really pleasant day for, for hiking. It kind of takes a couple of cold mornings before you work out, you know, where your sweet spot is in terms of what gear to wear. At the moment, it's still shorts and t-shirt weather. However, you can throw on a light wind jacket early on or a long sleeve shirt. As we get into winter though, I can get into more depth about layering and, and what are some good clothing choices when the temperatures go below zero. During this hike, I've kind of felt the first signs of a little flatness in my legs. Uh, my knees were a little sore on the downhill and my legs just didn't have as much energy as usual. I think this is pretty normal with the amount of work I'm putting in, um, but it'll just be good to keep an eye on it to see whether things improve or get worse. The total numbers for this hike were 6.29 kilometers, one hour and five minutes total 
with 498 meters of elevation. The average moving pace was around 9 minutes 37 per kilometer, and that's generally around 11 to 15 minutes per kilometer on the uphills because we're just hiking or walking, and the downhills can get down to around 5 minutes per kilometer. Friday is a running rest day, but I still get the strength workout and the exercise bike workout in. Strength again is more stability, core, and some leg strength exercises. And then the biking was uh, six reps of three minutes at a moderate pace. And that also has a 15 minute warm up and a cool down. So after Friday's session, we drove to Sapporo for a little overnight trip. The Autumn Food Festival is on there and my parents are also visiting so we wanted to show them a bit of what Hokkaido is like and, and some of the fun events that we have on. So with this little trip coinciding with my Saturday morning long run, I really had to make sure I organised myself well so as not to jeopardise my long run on the Saturday and end up doing something you know, suboptimal or you know, not quite meeting my goals. So I had to really prepare myself in terms of what gear I took along with me and also the logistics of where to run and when to run um, just to make sure I really nailed it. I made sure to pack all my running gear, sports drink and gels, my running vest and my trail shoes. I also planned out my route at a local mountain to ensure I could get the elevation in I needed. Support is very flat, especially surrounding where we were staying. Since I started back running this year after some injuries, I've been feeling so grateful to be out moving again that each run has felt pretty special and I never really found it tough to get out the door. This run was never really in question, however there are a number of contributing factors that made it pretty tough and I was happy just to get it done on the day. The first big one that I was a little bit scared to take the course that I had originally planned there were lots of warning signs about bears at the entrance and although I knew it would have been extremely unlikely for any bears to be around, I was also alone. It was pretty dark and misty and so I eventually just pulled the plug on that course and decided to run around the roads close by. The second factor was that my stomach was giving me some issues and discomfort throughout the run. Thirdly, maybe due to some lack of sleep, and maybe due to fatigue, my body just felt really flat and it took a long time to get my legs moving. It was raining and it was also generally a bit miserable. So about 20 minutes into this run, I just wasn't feeling particularly good about everything. I put my head down and I just kept on moving. Eventually I got into a bit of a rhythm and worked out a good course to follow which I repeated a couple of times. I got swooped by this huge Japanese hornet, which scared the absolute crap out of me. Um, but in the end, I got the run done and was happy with how it turned out. The totals for the run were 9.19 kilometers, one hour and 27 minutes total, with 469 meters of elevation. The average pace was around nine minutes 15 per kilometer. So that's it for training this week. It was a total of around seven hours and 27 minutes across my bikes, runs, and strength workouts. And on top of that, I'm also doing foam rolling and a bit of rehab for my feet. So likely another hour or so added on to that. So thanks everyone for tuning in again, and I'll catch you all next time on the next training log.